students, welcome to Sunil's tutorial. I'm Sunil Bhagwani and today we'll be doing this chapter called as Electrostatics. Let's continue. Let's try to see radiation of molar conductivity. Theorem which says that by Fred, which is Friedrich Cole Rausch's Rausch's Friedrich Cole Rausch's gave the relation that. Molar conductivity is nothing but molar conductivity at zero concentration plus k times square root of c. That is the relationship given by Friedrich Kolarosh, right? Where I can say that a is constant. This is molar conductivity at molar conductivity at infinity dilution. Infinity dilution or zero concentration. Either way would be the same, right? Now, if I were to draw this graph, the graph of molar conductivity. The graph of molar conductivity of strong and weak electrolytes of strong and weak electrolyte with square root of concentration, the graph would be something like this. I'm taking molar conductivity on y-axis and I am taking square root of concentration on x-axis. Now, if I have to draw a graph, what I will get is, I will get this graph this way. This is going to be the graph of molar conductivity versus square root of concentration, where this when the concentration is less, this is going to be my weak electrolyte, obviously, because the concentration is low here, and this here the concentration is high, therefore this is going to be my strong elect this is weak electrolyte. Now, if I have to draw for a strong e electrolyte, the strong electrolyte will have something like this. This is going to be the graph for strong electrolyte. This is my graph of strong electrolyte right so this is my graph of molar conductivity of strong and weak electrolyte with square root of concentration right now first let's talk about the strong electrolyte what we see is that the molar conductivity of strong electrolyte shows linear variation with molar conductivity uh, with uh, sorry, with concentration, square root of concentration, you will see that the graph of the strong electrolyte is a straight line. Now, at infinite dilution, that means it has been diluted to an extent where no further dilution is not possible. Uh, further dilution does not increase the molar conductivity. Ions are already dissociated and ionized to the extent they could have been. Hence they would not interact with each other, right? Let's see this, I can say that the molar conductivity conductivity of strong electrolyte so molar conductivity of strong electrolyte shows linear variation shows variation with square root of C concentration 
right? Very simple. Now, so let's come to weak electrolytes. Weak electrolytes um, do not show a linear weak electrolyte as you can see from the graph. Electrolyte do not show linear variation. Now, in the case of weak electrolyte, I can say that the in the infinite dilution which is present in weak electrolyte means that means the solution is so dilute means the solution is so dilute the solution is so dilute that further dilution does not increase that Further dilution does not increase the more does not increase the molar conductivity. Right? The ions are apart and hence they do not interact with one another. The ions are apart. And hence they do not interact with each other. Interact with each other. Right? Hence the in the case of weak electrolyte, the graph does not approach linearity. This is the reason why. The graph is not linear in the case of uh, a weak electrolyte because the solution is so dilute that uh, further dilution would not increase the molar conductivity and therefore the molar conductivity decreases at a very, very rapid rate and which leads to a non-linear graph. Right? Uh, in the case of, uh, you have a linear graph in the case of a strong electrolyte that gives this point is called as molar conductivity at zero concentration. Right? I can say that the extrapolation that's your point of intersection. The extrapolation of the linear graph of strong electrolyte, the extrapolation of linear graph of strong electrolyte the extrapolation of linear graph of strong electrolyte gives molar conductivity at zero concentration but this is not applicable in case of weak electrolyte. This is not possible in the case of weak electrolyte as the curve does not approach linearity. As the curve does not approach linearity. As the curve does not approach Right. Uh, but but in this case also the molar conductivity at uh, zero concentration can be calculated. Calculated. Although graphically I cannot get this. By Cohen Roche's law. So that equation would give you the molar conductivity even for a weak electrolyte. Right? Both for a strong and a weak electrolyte, you would get the molar conductivity. In the case of strong electrolyte, you will get the molar conductivity because of uh, the graph intersecting with the y-axis. Well, whereas in the case of uh, weak electrolyte, 
by using the derivation you can get the molar conductivity. Why do we get this in here? Now, let us try to understand this Polaroid's law in detail. What does the law state? It states that at infinite dilution, each ion will behave independently of its co-ion and will make its own contribution to the total molar conductivity of an electrolyte irrespective of the nature of the other ion. At, by, at infinite dilution, the ions are already separate. Right? There is no more by further dilution, there is no chance that I could increase the number of ions in the solution. So at infinite dilution, each ion could make its own contribution to molar conductivity and that will not depend upon the other ions that are present. Because there is no further dissociation or ionization that would take place in the solution. Fine? So I can say that at infinite dilution, at infinite dilution, each ion migrates independently, migrates independently, each ion migrates independently of its co ion, of its co ion, and makes its own contribution. own contribution makes its own contribution to the total molar conductivity the total molar conductivity to the total molar conductivity of an electrolyte irrespective Irrespective of the nature of the other ion, nature of the other ion, irrespective of the nature of the other ion with which it is associated, with which it is associated. Right? So at infinite dilution, each ion will produce its own effect on the molar conductivity and that effect will be independent of the other ions that are present in the solution. Right? Now, if you talk about the solution, both cations and anions are present in the solution hence both are going to contribute to the molar conductivity. Therefore, the molar conductivity at infinite dilution, if I am saying that it is independent and it depends upon each ion, then I can say that the molar conductivity at infinite dilution should be equal to the sum of the molar conductivity due to cations and anions. I will say that as both cations and anions of an electrolyte Contribute, contribute to infinite molar conductivity or molar conductivity and infinite dilution. Therefore, I can say that molar conductivity at infinite dilution is nothing but lambda plus zero plus lambda minus zero. Where I can say that lambda plus raised to 0 plus lambda minus raised to 0 is the molar conductivity is the molar conductivity of cation and anion at 
find infinite dilution. Right? Now let's try to explain this to you with the help of an example. Let's consider potassium iodide and sodium iodide. Potassium iodide and sodium iodide have molar conductivity at infinite dilution values as 150.3 and 126.9. Right? Now what does that mean? I can say that the difference between their molar conductivities, the difference between their molar conductivity at infinite dilution is 150.3 minus 126.9 which should give you 23.4 right which is equal to since they have sodium ions common which is equal to the difference between the difference between molar conductivity values of sodium ion and no potassium and sodium ion. Right? Experimentally we found out that the molar conductivity at infinite dilution for potassium iodide is 150.3 and for sodium iodide is 126.9. Now if I, both of them have iodine ion as common. If I find the difference between them, the difference is because of the positive ions present in them, the difference comes to 23.4 which is exactly equal to the difference between the molar conductivity of sodium and potassium ions taken independently. Which goes on to prove, this proves, that molar conductivity at infinite dilution of potassium iodide minus molar conductivity at infinite dilution of sodium iodide is equal to molar conductivity of potassium ions at infinite dilution plus molar conductivity of iodine ions at infinite dilution minus molar conductivity of sodium ions at infinite dilution plus molar conductivity of iodine ions at infinite dilution. If I open the bracket, this mathematically will give me molar conductivity of potassium ions at infinite dilution minus molar conductivity of sodium ions at infinite dilution. Right? Which goes on potassium iodide. That means, he said that in a dilute solution, in a extremely dilute solution, each ion will behave independently and will contribute to the molar conductivity. That means here potassium ions will contribute to molar conductivity and iodine ions. Same way here sodium and iodine ions, when I open the bracket, iodine ions will get cancelled. Molar conductivity of iodine ions will get cancelled and this is what you will get. Right? Question. Why do I need to study this? Right? By using this law, Molar conductivity of an electrolyte at zero concentration can be easily calculated. That is the reason why we study this law. What is the application of this law? Application of cold <coughs> law. Application of cold Rauch's law. By using this law, by using this law, molar conductivity of an electrolyte, molar conductivity of an electrolyte at zero concentration, zero concentration can be calculated. At zero concentration can be calculated. 
particularly important is the calculation of particularly important is the calculation of of molar conductivity at zero infinity of weak electrolytes of weak electrolytes right where extrapolation method cannot be used by graphical method they cannot be found out where extrapolation cannot be used right let's try to see this i can say that example let's explain this to you with the help of an example i can say that the molar conductivity at zero concentration of aspic acid can be calculated for acetic acid can be calculated calculated from molar conductivity at zero concentration values of strong electrolyte values of strong electrolyte like i could take uh, electrolytes like hydrochloric acid sodium chloride and sodium acetate by using these three i could easily find out the molar conductivity at zero concentration of weak electrolyte right um uh, i could say that molar conductivity at zero concentration of acetic acid is equal to molar conductivity molar conductivity at zero concentration of sodium acetate right plus molar conductivity at zero concentration of hcl minus molar conductivity at zero concentration of sodium chloride right so since i'm subtracting the molar conductivity of sodium chloride sodium will get cancelled from here the molar conductivity of sodium will get cancelled from here the molar conductivity of chlorine will get cancelled from here what will remain here is ch3coo from here and h from here that's all for a weak electrolyte i could not have actually found out but now by using the values of strong electrolyte i can find out the molar conductivity of a weak electrolyte right so and we already know molar conductivity at zero concentration for strong electrolytes for strong electrolytes can easily be calculated by extrapolation method right so do you understand why we need molar conductivity and zero molar conductivity next let's try to understand what is conductivity and degree of dissociation let's find out the relationship between conductivity and degree of dissociation of a weak electrolyte conductivity and degree of dissociation of a weak electrolyte now i can say that the degree of dissociation of a weak electrolyte the degree of dissociation of a weak electrolyte is related to the molar conductivity related to molar 
conductivity. Now, what is the factor that is common between them? Degree of dissociation depends upon concentration. Molar conductivity also depends upon concentration. So the factor that will bind them will be concentration. Is um, the degree of dissociation of a weak electrolyte is related to molar conductivity at concentration C by the equation. Now, the mathematical equation for this is degree of dissociation is molar conductivity upon molar conductivity at zero concentration. Right? Where I can say that molar, this is nothing but molar conductivity at zero concentration. Molar conductivity at zero concentration and molar conductivity at concentration C. Molar conductivity at concentration C. Right? Now, the degree of dissociation of a weak electrolyte dissociation constant of a weak electrolyte we have already learned can be given by the formula the dissociation constant of a weak electrolyte k is given by the formula alpha square c upon 1 minus alpha this we've learned from Oswald's law of dilution. Now if I substitute, I can therefore say that substitute value of alpha. Alpha we already said is nothing but molar conductivity upon molar conductivity at zero concentration. Therefore I can say K is alpha upon, sorry, molar conductivity upon molar conductivity at zero concentration square into C upon 1 minus circumflex upon circumflex 0 right so in that case this is going to be circumflex square C upon circumflex 0 square C into circumflex 0 minus circumflex upon circumflex 0 if I take LCM in the denominator in which case I will get this as circumflex square C upon circumflex 0, circumflex 0 minus circumflex. Right? So that is going to be the relationship between the dissociation constant and molar conductivity. Right? How do I actually find out molar conductivity? Right? How, how do I find out molar conductivity of a cell? measurement of conductivity measurement of conductivity now the conductivity molar conductivity of a solution can be determined by measuring the resistance of a solution by using Wheatstone bridge principle, the conductivity and molar conductivity, the conductivity and molar conductivity of a solution can be determined. can be determined by measuring by measuring the resistance of a solution the resistance of a solution by the 
need stone bridge need stone bridge principle now first of all let's see how do i get the conductivity of a cell solution in this and you take a glass tube that's my glass tube that has been dipped into the beaker and then you dip two electrodes in it Which have platinum plates at the end. Right. So this is my glass tube, and this is the solution in which whose conductivity I'm going to try to find out. Right. And these are your platinum plates. Now, how do I find out the conductivity of cell? The cell is dipped in a solution whose resistance is to be measured. First of all, I can say that the cell is dipped in a solution consists of a glass tube and two platinum plates coated with platinum black obtained by electrolysis of chloroplatinic acid this is your cell i can say that the cell consists of the cell consists of glass tube with two platinum plates Coated with platinum black. Coated with platinum black. Obtained. Obtained by electrolysis. Electrolysis of chloroplatinic acid. The conductivity of an electrolytic solution is given by the conductivity of an electrolytic solution is given by the formula K. Its conductivity is inversely proportional to resistance. Conductivity is inversely proportional to resistance. So one upon R 
into some constant. Actually, it should have been this way, guys. Conductivity is inversely proportional to resistance. Therefore, K is equal to one upon K into one upon R. Or I could say that instead of one upon A, I could actually take this as L upon A, right? Where I can say L upon A is a constant ratio. It's a constant. I can take any value for this. Where L upon A is a constant. L upon, L upon A is a constant ratio and is called as cell constant. Constant B. Right? Did you get this thing here? So this is called as cell constant B. Right? Okay. Uh, please stop this here for the day. Thank you very much.